All right, we're starting again, and I'm doing this riff again. <laughs> so, so okay. I was thinking okay. about, uh, I was listening to a podcast yesterday about the Uyghur Muslims, and it's funny because it sounds like that word that you're not allowed to say. Mm-hmm. So I was just imagining people being like, yo, what's up, B? It's Ramadan. <laughs> Trying to not eat any pork and, 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 um... And what else do they do? I don't know. I don't know enough about Islam. I don't know. I want to. I want to see this go somewhere. I mean, w- what else do Muslims do? Yeah. You know, you gotta pray five times a day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Y'all kind of trying to get my <laughs> prayer on, son. Why y'all Chinese motherfuckers coming down on me? Y'all, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to walk around the mall and not eat pork. <laughs> I'm just trying to cause trouble at the mall. Yo. Mm-hmm. You know, just a yeah. guy who's like he's got he's Muslim, but he also has like frosted tips. Yeah, and he's got goggles on. Yeah, that's a that's a for, that's a long of forgotten era. Oh, of the of the of the mall trouble guys. Yeah, or, no, of yeah. the I'm just gonna say it, the the wigger. <laughs> Eminem, I think it kind of died with Eminem's career, right? Yeah, I feel like it kind of did. And also, I guess with the internet, you just get made. People get made fun of too yeah. much. But yeah. yeah, that was a thing that a lot of people were doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, it, there it was. There was a time where it was pretty dangerous to try to go to a lids in mm-hmm. your local mall. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. Well, Malin's back, everybody. And before we get into our main story, I just want to share this article from PinkNews.com, PinkNews.co.uk. Mafia drops ban on homosexuality after discovering mob boss's son is a fabulous drag queen. Now, they interviewed this guy, Nicola Grateri, who was an anti-mafia prosecutor who uh, has prosecuted the Andretta, which is, I guess, the Calabrian Mafia, I think. Um, But it says, in the past, mobsters risked being murdered if they were even suspected of being gay. But the once fiercely homophobic mafia has now, quote, evolved with society an anti-mafia investigator in the southern region of Calabria has revealed. Nicola Grateri told the Times that although homosexuality is still taboo among older bosses, the mafia has relaxed its rules to permit gay men in its lower ranks as long as they don't, quote, parade it in public. Uh, he eavesdropped on communications between the Andretta, Southern Italy's richest crime syndicate. The family are thought to control 80% of cocaine flow in Europe, part of a business that brings in $38 billion a year. Um... And, uh, yeah, this guy says it undermines their image of themselves as tough, virile guys, says, said Grateri. But the mafia have evolved along with society. Gays can be accepted now, even as foot soldiers, so long as they don't parade it in public. So good for them. Can you stop <laughs> drinking water? Because I can hear it. <laughs> Please, Frankie. Frankie. He's busy. Um, yeah. Don't you know that? Anyway, I think that's a funny thing because it's like th- when you talk about the mob, there is th- it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of fronting, as they say. Yeah, you know, yeah. and just the fact that like now they can now one can be like, oh, we like gays, so now they can all just let let it down. But as long so as I wonder what the next thing is going to be. Public, so like, what's the threshold for that? Right. Also, if yeah. it's a drag queen, you that's just can't parading it in public. Right. Well, you just yeah, but and drag paid clubs. To- you know, you just can't walk down the street with your boyfriend singing Hamilton. OK, OK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is a just a good musical, by the way. Um, yeah. But uh, this this com uh, there was a comment from this guy. He He's lived uh, for three decades under police protection, claims that the Andretta have grown soft. I've brought to trial the grandfathers and fathers of today's bosses. They were impassive in the face of long prison sentences. The young today can't take the stress of prison in the way their parents did. They get paranoid, depressed. They're more fragile. Maybe prisons so. are harder, though. Like, didn't it yeah. used to be like you'd have your own wing and like... Yeah, you'd have like your own deli slicer to like, you know. Yeah, I freshly... feel that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, I feel like there was probably less uh, rape. Yeah. In prison. Yeah. In the earlier time, I would just guess. Yeah. And then I think around like not the '60s, they discovered that they could rape each other. Yep, that's that's all. Because you think of the like, sexual revolution, <laughs> right? Because you, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you think of prison in like the you know earlier times, it's yeah. just guys in stripes. You know, it actually it actually looks fun. Yeah, you get to hang out with your boys. You get to exercise. You get to work on your core. You know, you get to do high intensity Time away workouts. From the life. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Breaking yeah. up rocks and stuff. Right? But this is like. I mean, that's, I mean, honestly, that's the only thing I'm afraid of about going to prison. Oh, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I get, I don't know. I, feel, I love to read. I get I get a lot of reading done. <laughs> <laughs> I just read and lift weights. That's think, the only thing that makes it hard. I think they used to tucker them out more with the breaking of the blocks and the, mm-hmm. you know, like, right. paving of the roads and all that stuff, like in Florida with chain gangs. And right. there's no there's no energy left to rape at the end of the day. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Imagine finding out that, like, the men in prison, if it's not... If there's if you remove the rape from prison, okay, it's actually the perfect place for men to be because mm-hmm. they get to like lift weights and yeah, read about conspiracies or whatever, <laughs> read about history. But like you're reading about it for like, so then our first woman president, tablet. so then our first woman president just puts all the men in prison. And she's like, no, they like it. <laughs> No, I just want to say that you know what? I think men like being in prison, and I want to and and. and and they're happy there. Look. Is that Elizabeth Warren? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good to I'm know. I'm still working on that one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Is this is this like a is this a voice acting demo right now? With yeah, your sure. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren? <laughs> yes. That's been my plan all along to be on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Wait, I was watching a there was some Saturday Night Live sketch where it was like it was like the NATO cafeteria. Yeah, last week or something. Yeah. yeah. So it was like the whole thing was like Macron and Trudeau are like yeah. bullying P- Trump. Yeah. And then Trump has to go sit with Latvia and he's at yeah. like the loser's table. Yeah. I was like, I would rather watch like the sketch comedy that four of the most like right wing racist guys from Long Island make <laughs> than this fucking garbage. Yeah. Like that um, one that Adult Swim had on a while ago. The guy was like, your legs are gum gums. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Million Dollar Extreme. Yes, yes. Mullen loves, (laughs) he's like, those guys are so talented. (laughs) Yeah, he goes, I didn't know your legs. I've met them, and they're trash bags. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little weird. Were they mean to you? Um, You want me to fight them? No, yeah. I, no, I, I mean, I should just lie, and I'd, I would like to see you fight someone. I think that would be fun. Yeah, I yeah. Think where they probably kick my ass. <laughs> yeah, no, one of them's like <laughs> six foot and like pretty, he's hefty. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the physics of the heft mm-hmm. that would make him hard to fight. But yeah. This is the Mike Racine Show, and this is getting my ass kicked by a right-wing <laughs> sketch. <laughs> sketch show. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, by a bunch of guys who play dress up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, so so this guy said this. So he, this is actually this is a pretty funny part of the article. Um, yeah, I brought the trial of grandfathers and fathers. Now this guy said that it says instead of receiving the expected death threats for his comments, Grateri was bombarded with emails accusing him of being insensitive for declaring the mafia's admittance of gay men meant they'd gone soft, suggesting that times have really changed. So instead, of, they usually just threaten to kill this guy. They're like, <laughs> you gotta, you really gotta check your privilege and. Um, <laughs> Why are you so homophobic? <laughs> Why are you holding on to these old, these old ideas? <laughs> so, yeah. So, this guy. So, fuck you. F- you know what? Fuck the feds and their homophobia. Yeah. Yeah. I. Well, I mean, it's not as long as you don't parade it, though. Like, I just don't know what the threshold is then. Mm-hmm. Right? What can do you mean? Hold hands? Like, can you go see yeah. cats? Can yeah. Can you go. Right, because you Taylor Swift concert. Right, because back in the day, you would you would actually get killed for yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I think it just means like don't. I don't know. Just don't do it in public. Don't kiss your boyfriend in public. <laughs> huh. Like any healthy relationship. Right. Like I have that right. policy. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> no one should kiss their partner in public. No, it's gross. Yeah. Yeah. It should be. We should be sexless in the streets. Yes. Yeah, I know. Um. I guess I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to stereotype people anymore. Yeah. Because it really, it's like they're Italian. So it's yeah. like, you're, you know. But aren't, like, that's like one of the gayest of the European cultures. It's one of the gayest it of the is. European cultures. Yeah. 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 So the, so what are they going to say? Don't be Italian <laughs> in public. <laughs> like you can, it's like, it's like you can, it, like if you're allowed to be Italian in public, yeah. then you, you that's okay. That's a, 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 a good threshold. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so congrats. To the to those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So today we're talking about. Um, I want to do an episode about McKinsey, the management consulting firm. Yeah. We did a lot of research, and I'm like, is this? And you know, halfway through every episode, we do. We probably do about three three or so hours of uh, 
planning yeah. and stuff. I'm like, is this is this interesting? It might not be, but here we go, folks. <laughs> so, uh, so a, a few. So, okay. So, I want to take I want to take you guys back to, to the year 2015. Saudi Arabia implemented some uh, austerity austerity moves, some austerity policies, and there were three main critics of these policies. Um, there was an a, uh, a Saudi Arabia based writer named Khalid Al Akami. Um, a dissident living in Canada named Omar Abdul Z- Ab- Abdul Aziz, yeah, there we go, Abdul Aziz, and an anonymous writer and and uh, McKinsey, uh, the management consulting firm, created this report, and um, it was a nine page report. And then after that, the the one Alakami was arrested, and then Abdul Aziz's brothers, who were living in Saudi Arabia, were put in prison. And then the anonymous Twitter channel was shut down. So they basically dis- they, they McKinsey figured out that most of the dissent right was coming from these three right. these three sources. Yeah, and they arrested the one guy, jailed the other guy's brothers, and then put the other one in prison. Mm-hmm. And they've been working with now. I don't want to like pass judgment on on Saudi Arabia or anything, right? Because it's a country made up of individuals yeah. who did nine eleven yeah. and threatened to do it again mm-hmm. to Canada. Yeah. They let women um, drive now, though. That's kind of fun. They let women drive yeah. now? Yeah. yeah. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. MBS, right? <laughs> <laughs> a, great, a great reformer. Yeah. Well, okay. So, yeah, they, well, with management consulting, mm-hmm. you know, usually, like, they, a business comes to a management consulting firm and goes, hey, we have a problem. Tell mm-hmm. us how to fix it. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, you know, a fresh pair of eyes on the problem. But McKinsey also works with governments, mm-hmm. and sometimes their problems are people who are... Uh, against their regime, right? So McKinsey is more than happy to offer those services to people who are, right? Who are uh, who are willing to cut up people in a in a consulate? Yeah, we're not, we're not saying they were we're not saying they suitcase. were involved in that. Yeah, no, they're like a they're like a consigliere. Right? Uh huh. Like they don't they can advise you, but they won't cut up the body themselves. That was the funny thing about the Khashoggi murder, where they yeah. were like. I know we we're just trying to like intimidate him, and then it got out of hand, and we ended up chopping all his limbs off. The bones, the bone saw just kept slipping. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. How. No, I just wanted to scare him with the bone saw. <laughs> no, we were just gonna like, yeah, put it near his. Anyway, R.I.P. R.I.P. to a real one. <laughs> Let's pour some out for Jamal Khashoggi, baby. You know. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So it's it's. Um, so when that came out, it's just kind of, um, it's been like a deny, deny, deny thing with them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now this is from, I forget where this quote is from, but it's, I, I just have this thing right here from some article. It says, but more senior consultants, including partners said McKinsey was not in the business of passing judgment on its clients, cultures, and values. The best way to improve the kingdom, they argue, was to modernize the economy and make the government and companies work better. So what they think that they're doing, what, how, I mean, I guess how they justify it is they go, well, this is like a bad regime. These are bad people, but maybe if we get in there, we can like help them, Mm -hmm. you know, we can, we can, um, give them like a sex in the city dvd box set <laughs> to the crown prince and then you know maybe they'll watch it and be like oh okay oh it's not so it's not so bad yeah. if uh samantha wants to <laughs> yeah, fuck he just wants love. 100 guys in one episode <laughs> yeah right you know you can introduce them to like lena dunham yeah well she yeah the the gem of uh, williamsburg mm-hmm. i think that's how she's known mm-hmm. right? yeah yeah so you she can just be like, yeah. you can just be like, hey, here's, uh, yeah, here's, um, I'm trying to think of who's fucking, you know, here's He's Harry Potter, here's a Harry <laughs> Potter book. Maybe you could check this out. And then he'll be like, and then, you know, MBS goes, oh my God, have I, have I been v- Voldemort this whole time? <laughs> and then he decides he wants to be more like Harry Potter. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, this is from okay. So, there, so I read this. There was this current affairs article that was written by this anonymous person who used to work at McKinsey, and he said um, consultants who aim to help a thought authoritarian <laughs> authoritarian governments from the inside, yeah, often give into a desire to pursue their lucrative assignments. Um, they soft pedal their fear is if they speak truth to power at this state of their interactions, they will be tossed out. So actually, so and and also. I think there was some 
uh, forum that's like there's some online forum with McKinsey employees and somebody was like, if you want to make money, you have to work with the Saudis. <laughs> so everybody shut up <laughs> and calm down. Well, I mean, that's the, I mean, one of the problems with them is that they've expanded significantly within the past 15 years. Mm -hmm. So in order to, you know, uh, keep up with the revenue, you got to go look for alternative sources that have, you know, limited strings attached. Right. They just want you to tell them how to do shit. Now, did you do any research about like how, how they, so, I mean, a little, a little background information. They're one of the biggest management, management consulting firms. Like you said, yeah, they work with governments. They work with big, mm -hmm. big companies. The other ones are Bain, Bain Management, not to be confused with Bain Thank Capital. You. And then there's some other one. Mm. Who gives a shit? I only care about the winners. <laughs> if you're some fucking second rate yeah. management consulting, you know, when do you blow me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so... I wonder how did they, how did they start? Was there just some guy going around named McKinsey who's like, "Hey, I'll help you with your um," because yeah. they're like a they're like a hundred year old company. Yeah, so uh, I'm pretty sure it was a dude named McKinsey because mm -hmm. no one in the 20s would just choose an Irish an name Irish name. <laughs> yeah, it's embarrassing, yeah. right? Kind of gross, but yeah. uh yeah, no. So uh, he wanted to create a consulting firm that um, helped businesses look at things th through an accounting perspective. Mm -hmm. Then he died. Then in the late 30s, they adopted this policy um, that had to do with um, we don't pass judgment on people mm -hmm. um, who are coming to us. Um, it right. is okay to disagree with them, right. you know, um, and offer them alternative solutions. Don't mm -hmm. just be a yes man and there's a lot of um, uh, internal structures mm -hmm. that they start to put in place called an up or out policy, mm -hmm. which means either, you know, if you're not getting promoted, then then you're fired, which right. is super cutthroat, right? So, right. Um, and with their success, a lot. What of if you're the janitor? <laughs> what if you're just the lady who like stocks the the cafeteria? Yeah, what if you're the receptionist? It's you know, up. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so they um, it's anyway, it's super cutthroat, but a lot of um. Uh, different companies have started to adopt that policy as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it kind of just started off as like, well, think about it in terms of numbers. And then the problem is, is that they have never changed from thinking about things in terms of numbers. Yeah. Now they're working with Myanmar. They're working with China. They're working with they were Myanmar. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook did too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah of course they did. Um, I know that's the, that's the funny thing. It's like, cause I feel like over the past, you know, year and a half or two years, it's uh, like, it's hard to sort of understand mm -hmm. big business and, and sort of wrap your head around it. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't know, I guess just thinking about the scale of a lot of these companies that, that, that they're consulting on, mm -hmm. it ends up being like, it, it does end up being a very distanced, you're very distanced from the actual, like probably inner workings of the company. Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. Um, and then a great example of that is like the, the, what they did with, uh, with ice. Yeah. Or the uh, Department of Homeland. Was it Homeland Security? No, or? I mean, it was ICE. And mm -hmm. then they've, I mean, so that, that contracted um, ended in 2018, early mm -hmm. 2018. Mm -hmm. But they have a new one that's starting up with Border Patrol. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And Border Security and Patrol, whatever. Man, there's so and many government, there's so many government agencies. Yeah. This really is a podcast for like people with like an eighth grade education <laughs> who just, who didn't pay attention in school. <laughs> <laughs> or just went to public school and just missed. This is, I, I, I mean, p people complain about the show not being like in, in depth enough yeah. or too speculative. Yeah. This isn't the show for you. Go fucking read something. You should be reading anyway, you piece yeah. of shit, instead of listening to a podcast. Before. Yeah. This is a mid level, this is a mid level show. <laughs> and, but you don't, you don't think of a, I, so I guess like you don't think of a government agency as someone who would need a, cons a consultant who would pay millions of dollars for a guy like yeah. Pete Buttigieg who just, came, who just got out of, cause they, the, another big thing is they recruit right out of business school. Yeah. Have you ever met a good person who went to Harvard? Um, I've met two. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, it, McKinsey is a lot in a lot of ways like Harvard mm -hmm. in that, they have this huge prestigious reputation mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's really just kind of built on pillars of sand and it's built mm -hmm. um, with cover ups by trying to constantly put their best face forward mm -hmm. and remain as secretive as possible what, what they're actually doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's like I think you should be skeptical of any institution like the Catholic Church or Ivy League schools. Right. Who uh, 
who put their reputation above how they care for people. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. You just get yeah. too powerful. Yeah. It's too powerful. That's the problem. Yeah. 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 Um, I forgot what I was going to say because I but let's, put a lull on things, but no, but let's talk about what they did with ice because oh, yeah. I, I guess what they, so they consulted and they, so they were hired to, to, um, make the, uh, detention centers run more efficiently. Mm-hmm. And what they found was that actually you could you could cut back on like food mm-hmm. and medical attention for detainees. Now I, I don't know what it's like to be in a labor like a a, mi- a migrant <laughs> detention camp, but I can't imagine you're getting that much food to begin and with. And medical attention. And medical attention. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's a pretty because I went to um I went to public school and like you think about the lunches you were served yeah. there that you still had to pay like two dollars for. Yeah. So what what do, what do they do now? It's like instead of like. They're like, you know, uh, if you give people four tater tots instead of six, <laughs> you can save upwards of you can save a lot of money. I mean, I, I think that, yeah, it's um, if you if you switch to, uh, you know, just uh, basic craft singles. Yeah. Instead of any of their. Malin and I went undercover. We crossed the border illegally, got picked, got picked up by ice and sent to a detention center. <laughs> <laughs> the food was the worst part. Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, I somehow get fat. <laughs> like, <laughs> I somehow like gain weight, gain twenty pounds. You're like they cut the food. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like it means like fewer jugs of water mm-hmm. in terms of medical intention, mm-hmm. right? Like that's yeah. all they. Yeah, it's it's pretty bare minimum. They also said to cut down on like supplies and stuff. So right. you look at the photos of the kids in cages, they just have space blankets. Mm-hmm. It's because they were told to cut back on yeah, on extravagant things like blankets. Right. Yeah. So but but see, this is the tough this is kind of like the tough thing about our society, right? Where everything is sort of told through the lens of like the people that are in in power. Mm-hmm. So I read this article one time. It was about it was about how like they're using there's certain technology companies that are using technology to enforce the border right so they're using like laser seeking laser sensors or whatever i to, think that's to, <laughs> laser sensors what do you mean like yeah they're just of, they're it, like, like a hunting they're, camera? they're making they're making the border more high tech okay. more secure and more high tech yeah right so you think of like so that like do people who work for that company, like, do they go home for the holidays and they're like, guess what we're working on? We're working on lasers because there's some Mexican family who just wants to, like, clean a toilet. <laughs> they just want to come here and make, because maybe there's a job, like, yeah. cleaning up, you know, vomit in a school or whatever it is, whatever work they're trying to stand in front of Home Depot. Yeah. And then somebody's, like, making, making like, robots to be, like, how do you say, I don't, my Spanish isn't very good, but... Banyo? No, but just what? just some robot at the border who's like, cuidado, cuidado, <laughs> no, no, ent- no entrada, <laughs> por favor, no, no, <laughs> no venga America. <laughs> so, so yeah, like it's hard to it's it's hard to actually empathize with you know marginalized people. Yeah. You don't know when ever tells their story. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, that's kind of been the problem for a long time. Just now it's easier to see mm-hmm. how uh, little of uh, people's stories are being told. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. if everybody has a camera on their phone, they can film whatever they want. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, versus just having, um, you know, like strictly controlled mm-hmm. narratives that are being put forward with people. I mean, right. one of the things is also that, you know, with the technology, they think that they're looking to cut down more on... Um, you know, human cost too. Like mm-hmm. you just need one dude managing cameras versus mm-hmm. like ten dudes patrolling the border. Right. So you don't have to pay for their health care. Right. And all of their other benefits and pensions and all that other well, shit. Well, so that was another thing that McKinsey did too. I read something yeah. about how like and I don't know if this was when when Buttigieg consulted for them, but I think one one thing that they recommended doing was that with the postal service they recommended using where the fuck is it? They recommended using less um, long-term employees, right? Yeah. So they were like, they they recommended hiring like more temp workers. Mm-hmm. So you think of like, you know, a guy who's like a mailman, mm-hmm. you know, think your typical mailman, like a guy who like, he's probably, you know, 
five seven, gray mustache, wears shorts, just you know, probably yeah. not very intelligent, but he can make a living delivering mail. And now you're like, you know, was his, his name's probably like Walter. I was gonna say Jeff. Yeah, Jeff or Walter, or Gary, and you're like Walter. Oh, Gary. We got s- yeah, yeah. You're like Gary. We got some bad news. <laughs> uh, we talked to uh, this is Tyler from the McKinsey Institute. <laughs> And he thinks that uh, we're going to, we, you know? Yeah. We yeah. got to let you Chet's go. Chet's a little concerned about how much money you're costing us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, do we want to talk about South Africa a little bit? Yeah, that one's a little complicated. Okay. Because uh, it's still ongoing. Then I'll let yeah, you, I'll let you take it. Want, Basically, uh, McKinsey and a subsidiary <laughs> in South Africa, um, they set up um, strategically placed... Um, government officials Mm -hmm. who were in control of contracts right they were working with the state-owned power company yeah to see that's the thing too i don't even like i don't even can't even wrap my head around like what a state-owned company is it's like con ed i guess yeah i guess yeah yeah it's like that i'm pretty sure maybe yeah (laughs) but they they set up those so that um the people that they placed within the government would um give them favorable contracts Mm -hmm. um and the revenue was about 75 million Mm mm-hmm from that for McKinsey. So mm-hmm. um, they're like, well, we'll just uh, give it back. Like, mm-hmm. that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like the monetary problem. Right. Which is also just kind of how they think, right? Mm-hmm. Which is like, well, fine. If you're going to make such a big deal about it, mm-hmm. take it back. I don't want it anymore. I don't need it. Right. You know? But it's not the right. issue. The issue is that you're putting people in a government to uh, favor your business. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then so another thing they were involved in where it's like in the so in the 1950s, um, so this is also from that current affairs article. Uh, in the 1950s, consultant Arch Patton pioneered the field of executive compensation after discovering that worker wages had risen faster than management wages. This led to a lucrative business helping executives justify more and more extreme paychecks. According to the economic policy, the typical CEO made 20 times the median employee's compensation in 1965. In 2015, that ratio had climbed to 286. And uh, when Patton was asked in the 1980s how he felt about his legacy, he had one word, guilty. That's right. Now you can go to hell, buddy. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess... Uh, I, so, so I guess their job is to help people justify their the the big executive salaries. Yeah, I mean, some of it I think also has to do with you know, there's no such thing as a completely unbiased uh, like opinion, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you know, the people that they are presenting to are executives, mm-hmm. right? So if they want to get more executive jobs and all that other, or you know, want to get more face time with them, wouldn't you also kind of recommend that they get higher salaries? Right. You know. Right, right. Yeah, and of course, like everybody who's presenting with like their oh, okay, so it's kind of like a yeah, yeah, would like like it also helps them justify internally how big their their salaries are going to be. Right. Yeah, and it's kind of like it's also like a political mindset too, mm-hmm. right? There's no such thing as like a truly neutral thing. Mm-hmm. You can see that with their recommendations in healthcare and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. Like, if you, like, look at the problem, like, when people talk about big business, it's not just about big business. It's the people who are offering them advice, too. Right. Right? It's a complicated web. Yeah, it's almost like this, like, sort of insulated club yeah. where, because you think of any business and and really, like, the day-to-day operations of that business do depend on the employees yeah. and the people who are working there and actually, yeah. like, you know, the right? cogs in the machine. But when you're like, oh, we can, you know. It just seems like all the decisions that McKinsey makes for these companies yeah. are bad for... Well, I mean, I think that they've... I mean, that's also the problem with being a consultant. They're kind of like the Ivanka Trumps mm-hmm. of uh, of the situation where they're like, well, I told him to do it, and he did it, mm-hmm. and it was great. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then, like, you can hail the success of someone choosing your decision, right? Right. But if they choose your decision and it doesn't work out well, you can be like, well, that's not exactly what I said, and yeah. I'm not actually the one doing it, mm-hmm. so... You know. Right, and that's another. That's an thing. impression of Ivanka Trump. It sounds just like her. No, oh. it's pretty good. I think my impressions are better than yours. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna go I can out only on a limb do, here. Like really weird. Vo- I can only do weird voices. Can you I can do, do any do, impressions? I can do impressions of like characters from Big Mouth. That's it. Okay. <laughs> um. There's no food. Oh hi, Deb. Yeah, we're just in the middle of doing a show. I'm sorry. 
that there's no food. Hey, <laughs> Deborah loves food <laughs> and eating. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just funny the idea of like you know working for a company because I because I guess uh, in pop culture they they those people from office office space mm-hmm. are like McKinsey type consultants. Okay. Yeah. So just just yeah, the idea of like just the idea of like some some twenty eight year old kid from Harvard and you you know you've been working at a factory. Yeah. You're like fifty years old. You're you're hunched over. Yeah. Your f- fingers are crooked, and they're like, so what, what would you dis- what would you say your job is here? Uh, I think yeah. I mean that's yeah. It's a problem with uh, upper business management stuff, right? Mm-hmm. They're kind of disconnected too people that they have to you know they're making decisions about but also one in four of them meet the criteria for being a psychopath so it doesn't matter yeah you know to them yeah yeah so i know but there's not there's nothing even like cool about it there's nothing cool (laughs) about working for these these money i think the answer is money and power (laughs) yeah it's money but if if you're like (laughs) If you're like a white person, what do you even spend that money on? I don't know. If you're just, you know, like if you're like in the suburbs, you get to go to like Ruby Tuesday an extra time. (laughs) You get to eat at Ruby Tuesday every night. Yeah. Yeah. That's the dream. Yeah. I think that's the American dream now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Okay. What else do we want to, what else do we want to get to in this episode? I mean, we covered, I guess we can talk about. I guess we can talk about Mayor Pete. I, yeah, he's a, yeah, it's going to be a centrist, isn't it? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it will be fun to watch his, him get his ass kicked by Don, <laughs> by my hero, Donald Trump, if he is it's, the nominee. It's just um, that it's, he's such a giant man. He's just like a giant. Trump? Yes, of course. Mm. And just like seeing the two of them on stage, I just mm-hmm. feel like it's a Laurel and Hardy thing. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It would it would look funny, mm-hmm. but <laughs> my heart would be sad. So he was involved. So uh, so Pete uh, worked for McKinsey for like three years. Mm-hmm. And um, so there was so but but so the thing about McKinsey is there there's there's very there's not there's NDAs of mm-hmm. the people they consult for mm-hmm. so if they give you an idea the part of the deal is with these big contracts is that if they give you an idea you get to take credit for it okay so it it was actually you know your idea to look all your older employees in the face and tell them to clean out their desks <laughs> um but uh but then also, like, if if their ideas fail, you can't say like, "Oh, McKinsey told me to do it." Yeah. So it's like a thing where they get you get they that doesn't matter. They're just this kind of like shadowy, yeah, you know, element of the yeah. business. So really, yeah. they can tell you whatever they want, I guess. Yeah, they could. Yeah, and it's they also have such a reputation that if it doesn't work out, they can just kind of say it's your fault. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because their reputation is so uh, considered a top notch in terms of management consulting yeah yeah so uh pete Buttigieg is running for president and he 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 uh <laughs> refused to reveal his uh because he was like oh it's all an nda but yeah. he re- it was recently uh they were they were his clients at mckinsey were released yeah and um they uh they were where do i have they uh, oh, so they a were? list of yeah so a list of his clients at McKinsey has come out and the client list include includes um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Best Buy. I wonder what he was doing at Best Buy. Yeah, I don't know. I'll probably just put more video cameras up in the hip hop CD section. Jesus, Malin. <laughs> but that's the weird thing. I no, did. I, mean, I did say this already. But like yeah. they're hi- they're hiring these young Ivy League <laughs> kids right out of business yeah. school. But it doesn't seem like the and they consult on so many. I think it's like two thousand um, companies that they consult for. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, yeah. You mean the company as a whole? Yeah. Or McKinsey just consults for yeah two thousand. Just, <laughs> just Pete. Consulting. Yeah. <laughs> two thousand companies. Yeah. Yeah. Seventy five a day. Yeah. I mean, it's 
I don't know. Um, they but do they have all this knowledge about every different type of business, or can you uh, maybe business is you know if you know enough about business in general, you can sort of break it down to I don't fucking know. As a non-business person mm-hmm. who needs to use um, their calculator on their phone for very basic math, mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't tell you. But um, I think that yeah, I mean if the if it's a for-profit business, I mean he also worked with uh, nonprofits and stuff, but. Mm-hmm. It, it, a lot of it is very similar. Yeah. You know, a lot yeah. of it can translate. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I really like, I'm just, uh, nerds scare me more than a- any other group of people. Just n- nerds with power. They've been bullied. They're mad. They carry those scars around. And you just think of like, you just think of all the damage they can do once they get power because they're hate, they're spiteful people. They act like they're not, but they're actually very spiteful people. <laughs> and then also like, they they think they're better than everybody. Yeah, yeah. They think because they you know is, read Harry Potter. Are you, are you running for twenty twenty? Is this your is this your uh, is this your platform? I do think about running for president a lot as like a as like a progressive, but I but I curse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you you could you know like, I don't know, just being like a like a Jimmy Hoffa type. Yeah, character. Good. Yeah, yeah, do that. I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd vote for Jimmy Hoffa in mm-hmm. 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it just makes you think like, I, I don't know. I don't know what the hell they do. But I think, I think the most telling thing about them is the work that they did for ICE. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, a part, I mean, some of it is, yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, cause it's about money versus human lives. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, uh. Their work with the opioid companies right. is also pretty telling, too. Did you do any... Yeah, did you did look into that? Uh, I read a few paragraphs. Okay. Yeah. Let's hear it. So, basically, uh, they not... Uh, so, in the opioid epidemic that's going on right now, um, the um, two companies, Purdue mm-hmm. Pharmaceuticals and Johnson & Johnson, um, kind of, uh, they... They, uh... They pushed um oxycon um into uh and like kind of sold it as a thing that's not addictive even though it definitely is Mm -hmm. and it's considered more addictive than other opioids Mm -hmm. um and one of the ways that they because mckinsey consulted on that right and they consulted on that and they said like to turbo charge or to turbo sell Mm -hmm. that opioid would make them a lot of money right and so I guess the problem. So this with stuff's that not <laughs> as complicated. Is that white guys Go are now ahead. dying, right? Instead of black people from crack and all that other stuff. That's the big deal. Right, but it's not like crack was made by a pharmaceutical company. <laughs> uh, that's a good point. It's true. Yeah, no, they. they I mean, but yeah, the, yeah. I mean, it's anyway. That also is another one where it has to do with money or human lives, but it has to do more with profits versus just cutting costs, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, these like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, when I do research for the show, you you think it's like really complicated, but maybe it's not like maybe there was some meeting where they were like, this guy knew the opioids were addictive and they were like, just don't just say they're not addictive. Yeah. That could have been all it was because these people aren't that smart. They're not smarter than me. <laughs> no one's smarter than you, Mike. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, th- there have been the Sackler family, who I believe runs Purdue Pharmaceuticals. Mm-hmm. Um, there were emails um, that were uh, were brought to light where one of them is just seriously asking, well, how much money can we make if they're addicted? And what is the threshold for them overdosing? Yeah. Right? So mm-hmm. how much money can we make before they die? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, uh, yeah, it's just very basic. It's not... And you don't have to think about it because they're in tra- they're in trailer parks. Yeah, yeah, they're in West Virginia or Indiana. And you're like, yeah. I watched True Detective. I know what these people are about. <laughs> so, but so, who? But who is buying? Who is buying the pills? What do you mean? Like, who is? Are the are the are the f- insurance companies buying the pills from these? I don't know how this well, stuff the- works. <laughs> Oh no, I don't know if I do either. Yeah. Um, no, well, I mean, uh, they that's okay. The show is. We should just yeah. call the show specul speculations. <laughs> well, you know, uh, a a doctor prescribes it, right? Mm-hmm. And then the 
a, an insurance company can, you know, subsidize it for somebody if they have insurance. Okay. But ultimately, people who are kind of buying it are, you know. They're using their own money. Yeah. you got to use your own money to, or partially right. insurance money to buy something. Okay. Right? That's a pill. Right. Yeah. Okay. So these people are going in for, for pain. Yeah. For pain. The doctors are getting free lunch from pharmaceutical reps. Yeah. Right. That's all it takes. Right. I actually I was down the shore last last summer and there was a there was a deli and the, the, the deli's van was parked outside and it said we specialize in pharmaceutical rep lunches. Is that <laughs> real? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That's we specialize in lunches for pharmaceutical <laughs> reps. Yeah, so like which which seems like a pretty like benign thing, but then you think about what's actual what's actually being done with those sandwiches. Like yeah. that sandwich is the starting point of people dying and people overdosing. That tuna sub, that yeah. tuna melt, yeah, is, uh, that yeah. Egg salad, <laughs> right, is a big deal. <laughs> Just, it's like loud in here. Um, but uh, yeah, that tu- that tuna, that Italian combo is the first step <laughs> to some dumbass doctor being like, "Oh yeah, oh thanks," because <laughs> they're not allowed to pay the doctors, right? But well, they can bring them lunch. Yeah, they can bring them lunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there's. They also, I mean, with a lot of pharmaceutical companies, they also can provide incentives for um, sometimes how much you sell. Mm -hmm. And even in veterinary medicine, that's kind of a problem, Mm -hmm. too. Um, There was one incident where Abbott Pharmaceuticals um, went around telling um, different veterinary um, hospitals that, hey, the more anesthesia you buy, you get a discount. Uh, What does that translate to? Using, it translates using to it more. using it more mm-hmm. or giving unnecessary surgery to animals mm-hmm. in order to get a discount on the anesthesia, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So no one's putting my dog under anesthesia. I'll fight. <laughs> I'll fight the, the whole. I, I will fight the whole veterinary <laughs> office. I'll, I'll fight all the. T- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'll fight the girl with the nose ring. I'll fight the fat gay guy. Yep, yeah, yeah. I'll fight the doctor. Yeah, I was gonna more of a septum piercing now situation, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That gray bleach blonde. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, right. So, yeah, so they can provide incentives in other ways. They also sometimes give out um, uh, medical models, mm-hmm. which are super fucking expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can get them for free as long as like it says like Prilosec OTC at right. the bottom of it. Right. Yeah. So so let's let's just quickly sort of trace that like that supply chain, right? Yeah. So like of of the of people getting prescribed addicting deadly opiates that end up killing them because mm-hmm. my friend jason Cantor, his his sister passed away she oh, had Jesus. two she had two boys and she's Jesus he said Christ. yeah it was like a classic opioid death where i i don't know what happened but i guess she got addicted and overdosed and now yeah. there's two kids without a without a fucking yeah. mom um but um so okay so the pharmaceutical rep uh goes into defazio's deli and they go, um, yeah. Uh, hey, you, you guys do the reps for pharma- the lunches for pharmaceutical <laughs> reps. Cool. Let me get the, let me get the oxy combo, <laughs> which is like a, which is like a cut up sandwich, yep. po- potato salad on the side, mm-hmm. maybe a little macaroni salad. Yep. They probably make a good macaroni salad. I was gonna say that. Yeah, I could see that. They get the the plastic platter of sandwiches that are not gonna be eaten mm-hmm. into their car. Yeah. They probably expense the lunches, right? That lunch is an expense. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Okay. So, so then not, the dude's not paying it for himself. The company's paying for that. Right. Yeah. So you're just some like scumbag pharmaceutical rep, and then you go to the, you just show up at the doctor's office. You go, hey, how you doing? I brought lunch for everybody. <laughs> is that what they do? They just go to doctors' offices and buy lunch, well, or they probably just have appointments or something. Yeah. No, well, yeah. They, they have appointments, but it's also like, hey, here's this lunch. Also, mm-hmm. while you're doing that. I want to talk to you about this this drug, mm-hmm. right? Right. So if you if you apply for a job in a, in a lot of medical offices, mm-hmm. there is a, a perk that is shown to you that says free lunch every day. Really? Yeah. Oh. But what you, I'm in the wrong business, my don't friend. Don't <laughs> <laughs> this, po- <laughs> this podcasting bullshit. Yeah, you can be getting capicola sandwiches. Yeah, I could be day. I could be wearing scrubs, getting in fights with single mothers, just be at a reception, and <laughs> <laughs> get a free sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> just arguing with elderly people all day. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. 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 Um, just arguing with old Puerto Ricans. <laughs> I, yeah, I was. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so, but what they don't tell you is that all of those free lunches are not provided by your, by the doctor that, or the, the medical practice is provided by mm-hmm. the pharmaceutical reps who come in constantly. They come so, in constantly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's free lunch every day. 
And then so much just gets f- wasted. That's the other bad yeah. thing about McKinsey. They facilitate wasting food. Yeah. Which is a sin, <laughs> as we all know. <laughs> <laughs> it just sucks to think of like plates of chicken salad. I mean, I'm I'm getting upset right now. <laughs> just thinking about plates of that's chicken the real salad. In- that's the real yeah, injustice. Being thrown right in the trash. Yeah. And you yeah. can't even give them to the homeless because they'll fucking sue you. Because <laughs> homeless people are sneaky. Yeah, yeah. They, they have all of that. They're a bunch of sneaky con artists who <laughs> will sue you over their free food. Yeah, they have personal injury lawyers on retainer. Fuck, I fucking hate homeless people. God damn it. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, so, um, right. And, th- and then they're like, so they so the, the reps go to the doctor's offices. And do they are they selling to the doctor's offices? Well, they don't, I mean, they're not necessarily, I mean, it's, they're not, they're, in trying to incentivize them to prescribe it, mm-hmm. so like they're not necessarily selling it, but they're they're trying to get them to supply it more. Okay. And the way that it was right told so, to doctors is that it's a it's a worry free opiate. It's a mm-hmm. worry free painkiller. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's okay. one that that you don't that's not as addictive. Okay. Yeah. Now, but are these doctors responsible? These doctors should be responsible too, right? Yeah, of course. Of course they should. Like, they got to do more of their research and all that other shit, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, it's uh, some of it also does have to do with race. But as they just well. love that turkey club so much. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, Your Honor, I'm sorry. They brought in <laughs> Ruffle sour cream and cheddar, <laughs> my favorite chip. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They uh, they even had a jar of pickled eggs one day too. Mm-hmm. Those are hard to say no to. They brought McClure's <laughs> spicy pickles in. My favorite. <laughs> I, it's just, yeah. Well, fuck doctors. So so, but doctors are the uh, are the only. I mean, the only way you get these pills is from if they're is they're if they're prescribed right from a doctor. Mm-hmm. So the and doctors they are overgive like, too many too. Wh- so why do they overgive too many? Because just because they want to. Well, they want to like I think th- well some of it also has to do with race, mm-hmm. which is true so Mm -hmm. doctors there have been studies done doctors are less likely Mm -hmm. um to uh to assume that a a white person is doing drug seeking behavior than somebody of color so if you go into you can also just like go to multiple doctors but i thought people think that people doctors they think people of color are like faking it or something yeah exactly so they're less they're less likely they're more likely to to think that People of color are faking, aka have mm-hmm. more drug see- seeking behaviors. The doctor's like, "All right, Deshaun, what's yeah. what's bothering yeah. you now?" And they're less likely to prescribe and over prescribe pain meds to mm-hmm. them because they just assume that they're drug addicts or something, right? Versus people who are white who they over prescribe pain meds to people of color. I no, thought they, they under don't. Pres- they under prescribe. No, they're less likely to over prescribe to people of color because they, so they think don't th- over prescribe because they think that they're. They're either drug seeking, drug or seeking. Okay. They also sometimes, when you have they given think that they're doctors, faking it, just looking for dr- right. Yeah, if you've given doctors um, the uh like pain scales, mm-hmm. um, and asking them to rate what they think each patient's pain is, mm-hmm. people of color um are shown to be lower on that pain scale, so they mm-hmm. think that they just feel painless too. Okay. Yeah. So. Interesting. They should just suck it up. <laughs> yeah. So then, so, so the so basically, I mean, let's just sum this up real quick. The doctors are over prescribing these to opioids white to white people, and then yeah. they're getting addicted. And yeah. then when they can't get more pills, they start doing heroin or they because it's yeah, so fucking it, hard. It's so much cheaper, right? But it's also so fucking hard to like kick kick an addiction to these opioids. Yeah, exactly. And then they fucking overdose. Yeah, because it's a physical and a and a psychological addiction. Mm-hmm. Your brain doesn't function the same. Yeah. Yeah. So right, anyway, McKinsey was like, <laughs> they were like, here's here's all right, guys. <laughs> but 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 that is the logical conclusion of when you like pursue profits over everything else. Yeah. You're just like, how do we kill? How do we? Yeah, a few of them are going to overdose, but we're going to sell so much of these pills. <laughs> and then, yeah, they'll start doing heroin. Yeah. Whatever. And that's and that's where you got to get the fentanyl in. Right. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, most of fentanyl comes from over from China, actually. OK. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's really easy to smuggle in because you only need a little bit of it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and fent- fentanyl is what they cut it with. Yeah. So fentanyl is has the uh, it's an opioid one hundred times more powerful than morphine. Mm-hmm. 
and compared to heroin, which is about eight times more powerful than general morphine. Okay. And um, so if you cut your heroin with it, it can, you know, you only need a little, little bit of it in order to give people a greater high. But the problem is, is that um, most people who are cutting <laughs> fentanyl and heroin mm-hmm. uh, are, are not um, are not pharmaceutical. <laughs> right. Sure. <laughs> people. Sure. They don't have a degree in pharmacology. They don't so know how much to put the into threshold the threshold in order to, to die heroin. from it versus just get really high from it is very, very thin. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, that's that's the craziest part of the opioid thing. It's like people are so addicted to these pills that they're like, I need heroin. Yeah. And they'll just go to some ghetto. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> but they'll, they'll go. Yeah. Probably people who never thought they would buy her- be buying heroin. No, and it's a lot right? of people who start off with sports injuries and all this other stuff because they just overprescribe something. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And then how do you kick an opioid addiction once you're. Um, God. <laughs> yeah. G- yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, the average person, I think, goes that into rehab eight times with the, uh-huh. before it's, a f- you know, before it's actually done in terms of opioid mm-hmm. um, addiction. They go to rehab several times before they're fully done. Um, yeah. And, yeah, so you have to detox. And right. there's also, um, uh, you know, uh, methadone and, you know, other yeah. opioid substitutes that kind of help you kick it. It's also funny too that the Sackler family does a lot of like, uh, you know, philanthropy and charity work. Like they're, you know, how many buildings in Harvard have the Sackler name on it? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Three? I'm three. not sure. <laughs> um, not there's nothing. also the wing at the Guggenheim. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. What are you gonna do? Well, let's let's talk about something a little more not as bad as people uh, overdosing on heroin, but McKinsey was involved and Mayor Pete was involved, and it's bread. Bread, you know, we all eat bread every day. <laughs> bread is something. <laughs> bread is something that everyone's familiar with, and I'm pretty sure I can all understand this. So one of now one of uh, the the companies that when when Buttigieg uh, worked at McKinsey that he consulted on was the Canadian grocery chain Loblaws. Which is a great a great name yeah. for a store. I, I told you this before we recorded, but the bar in Canada is just so low. It seems like blah well, <laughs> I'm going to go grocery shopping at blah blah. What would that sound like with a Canadian accent? I feel like that. Would it be- sounds like you're gargling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, going to la la blahs. Um, I can't even. Uh, yeah, I feel like it just is like. Are you having a stroke, or do you need more canned tomato sauce? I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. So basically, what 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 came what came out was that he worked for Loblaws around the same time as there was a Brit the price fixing scandal among like Canadian grocers. Now, price fixing is when a bunch of companies collude to like yeah. charge the same so they can overcharge. Yeah. Um, which is like. I mean, I guess it's not that big of a deal that people overpaid for bread, but if this guy's willing to change the price of bread, I feel like he's willing to do a lot of other stuff. <laughs> people depend on bread. Working yeah. families need bread. I like bread, mm-hmm. and I don't like overpaying for it. I went to Saragina the other day, a little you know, artisan bakery in okay. my neighborhood, Okay. and I got a loaf of sourdough bread because I was making stuffing. Yeah. But Is it sourdough was, best for stuffing? Yeah. Yeah? I think so. Huh. Why? I don't know. I love sourdough bread, mm-hmm. and it would be good to know. If I love it too. Else I mean, I'll tell you what. Stale. Oh yeah, make stuffing with it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, stuffing is like you don't want to eat that during the regular. Like, well, yeah. no. I'm I non holiday I hours. totally will. You will. Don't tell me what to do with my body. Okay. My body, my choice. I'll eat as much fucking stuffing as I want. Go right. On. It's the landlord's decision, not the, <laughs> not the <laughs> temporary whatever. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Okay, oh, so did you see that? I, some some lady, I don't know who this this person, Jamila Jamil, I don't know who that is, but she tweeted something about how like abortion is the landlord's decision, not the tenant's. You can evict your baby whenever you want. <laughs> Why did she say, that's such a stupid I know. fucking comparison, especially because like you're saying that's a person in there. The yeah, whole point yeah. is that yeah. it's a parasitic jellyfish right. until, you know, the third trimester. Just like a landlord can kill his tenant for playing music too loud. <laughs> You can kill your baby. There was another thing too, where somebody somebody was like, "Okay, I've decided that I need I need to work twenty hours to get uh, Chloe Kardashian jeans. Oh yeah. So I'll be picking up extra shifts, and then Chloe Kardashian was like, "Awesome girl, get get it." 
picking up extra shifts so I can afford pants. Yep. From some, yeah. And like they probably have like one third of the fabric missing. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like those stupid like ripped things it makes it look like you were attacked by an Akita. Right. Yeah. They're probably like oversized, very long <laughs> for you know if you have like tree trunk legs. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, do I? I don't know. I don't know what my legs are. I was just trying to make fun of. I was trying to body shame her, which I shouldn't. Oh. Have, I shouldn't have done okay. that. Well, this is over. That's where I. Yeah, draw that the wasn't line. cool. That's where I draw the line. I know like. we're just throwing stuff out. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I apologize for that. Okay, so if you try to use that clip against me, okay, I already preemptively apologize for it. Okay, I think Khloe Kardashian has a beautiful body, <laughs> and I, I just, I'm so jealous of all the lucky NBA players who have got to see it up close. <laughs> all right, so, um, all right, what I uh, want to say, bread, sourdough. You're at your local so he, artisan so, bakery with so your sourdough. Pete, so there's a bunch yeah. of there's a bunch of Canadian like bread truthers on Twitter who are like, he fixed the price of bread. That was pro- and that's pr- that's probably what McKinsey does. They're probably like, yeah. oh, it's like they they rest on their their reputation and they're like, hey, you know, we're the big management consulting firm. All right, let's get together with the other the other grocery stores yeah. and we'll just f- change it. the price of bread. Yeah. Now, I don't know why they why exactly they they did that. I mean, maybe it was to like temporarily boost profits or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, I don't trust this fucking guy. Mayor Pete? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm not into it. Mm -hmm. I'm not into it. I mean, him versus Biden. I'm just trying to, like, it's just, it's just like the debate between Trump. Mm -hmm. What would that be? Yeah. You know what I mean? Also, Trump did have a pretty funny diss on him, which is terrible. Mm -hmm. I hate admitting that he's right about anything, but he Mm -hmm. said he looks like that, Alfred E. Mad- Newman. Yes, 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 yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. He, said he said it twice. Mm-hmm. And the first time he said it, he was like, we got Alfred E. Newman over here, folks. And then Pete was like, I don't know. must be a generational thing. <laughs> and then he said it at the rally again. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I, I but like, it's like, there's no way that little Mayor Pete didn't, yeah. didn't, uh, didn't read Mad Magazine growing up. Right. There's no way he didn't. Come right. on. He probably read it and like didn't get it, and he'd be like, "I'm, I'm gonna be president someday." <laughs> Fuck this! <laughs> he saw people laughing, and he didn't understand like exactly what that sound was coming out of their mouth. And then he was like, "I'm just gonna be president." They say that that's been his goal since he's been like six years old. Why? Oh my god, that's so stupid. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not inter- into having a centrist right now. Mm-hmm. You know. Mainly well, you just because, think, yeah, you yeah. just think about like the debate against against Trump. Trump's gonna rip him apart. Yeah, maybe Biden. I mean, Trump is funnier than Biden. No, I think Bernie Sanders would do the best. It's two yeah. old men with very distinctive New York accents, mm-hmm. fucking yelling at each other. It would be right. amazing. And also, the thing with Bernie is like he doesn't he he doesn't seem to care what you say about yeah. him. He just kind of yeah. he lets it roll off his back. And yeah. I, I think that like okay. I can't imagine him. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I can't imagine him. I, I, I like I can imagine Pete or or um, you know Liz Warren kind of getting their feelings hurt. Yeah, by some, they probably yeah. do. Right. But but Bernie's just like mm. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't care. He gives zero fucks, yeah. as the cool kids like yeah. to say. Well, he doesn't have a dog, which I don't trust. But that's my own thing. He doesn't have a dog. No. No. Yeah, that's your thing. But also, also, like, Elizabeth Warren is a golden retriever, which is, like, the most boring of dogs. So, right. Right. yeah. Anyway, it's just me. Yeah. I like. I just like to think that all the time that Bernie could have spent, like, having a dog <laughs> or being a good father, he was, advoc- <laughs> he was advocating for us. So even though, so it's like, it's like to be that consistent and good of a politician, mm-hmm. you do have to let your son turn into just a complete piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you gotta th- do. That you don't endorse for when he runs for, um... An election. I don't son? think so. But I don't know much about Levi, but it seems like Levi is kind of a yeah. kind of a fuck up. But okay. that's just because Bernie's been busy, you know, write, writing Biden. rape essays and <laughs> Hunter yeah. Biden is a fucking mess. Yeah, he's kind of cool though. I mean, yeah, he he did a. Uh, there's a paternity suit that he's dealing with right now in like Arkansas, mm-hmm. which is like. Now, did the kind lady have? Did she have the baby already? Yeah, she had the baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw Candace Owens tweet. She was like, "Congrats to Joe Biden for becoming a grandfather this <laughs> this late in life." <laughs> it's like you can't say these people aren't funny. Um, all right, so is that everything? I mean, any I final guess. thoughts? Um, 
I guess uh, uh, I don't I, I don't know I, I think that um, when I was doing research about this it's like it's so because they also did Enron too Right? They did Enron. They yeah. had they had a whole Enron thing, and they fully knew what was going on. And it's what was Enron? They were like a wealth management or something. something. Yeah, I don't know. hold on, let me and look I it ref- up. I refuse I- to learn about that. Right, that was like before I cared about this stuff. That, uh, I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> an American energy, commodities, and services company based in Houston, Texas. It was found in That's 1985 nothing. as a merger between Houston Natural Gas and Internorth. So they were like an energy company. So so McKinsey was advising them as they were. Yeah, as they were um, building their own private golf courses as they at were, their yeah. own homes. Yeah. Nice. Cool. That's um, fucking sweet, though. Yeah, so, yeah, no, I mean, it was also just a I think I would do that if I was one of these CEOs. I'd just get a lot of model trains, and when when they <laughs> when it finds out that I've been abusing my employees and there's been multiple sexual harassment lawsuits, I'm just like, all right, you're right, but why don't you guys come into my house? Yeah, and let yeah, me, yeah. I just, I'm just showing off my you model can, train. You can, contr- you can control it. Like, it's like a whole yeah. town. I mean, you look at that. Yeah. They're like, what about the woman who claimed that she was... <laughs> She was harassed every day. Yeah. Well, this tiny town woman's reading a newspaper. Well, I mean, she's welcome to come here yeah. and have some hot chocolate and watch the trains, <laughs> watch the trains roll around. You know. Does it have running water? I don't know. That would be a good one. What was Tyco International? That was another. God, I was not. I mean, honestly, I just hear security like security systems company. Like when you hear about like these companies and like they describe themselves, just sounds like nothing. Mm-hmm. So I can't. I can't really tell you what they're what they're about. Um, but I yeah, know, and it's but it's so, so much it's so much revenue. Yeah, and that's where you know you can make the most money and get away with the most shit in something boring. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, I think that one of the takeaways from when I was <laughs> recent what? So this guy, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking up that company Tyco. It's like they were like a securities company, and then I looked, I looked up the CEO, this guy Dennis Kozlowski or something, mm-hmm. and then it said his wife is this lady. Angelina Suarez. So I clicked on that name in Google image search, and it's just a, an assortment of different Latina, <laughs> just a, a, a different Latina women. She could be any. She could be any of these, yeah, <laughs> random Latina women. Wow. What about her? That one could be. Yeah, nice. it could yeah. be. Yeah. Um, oh, um. Well, uh, uh. Oh, yeah. So I don't know. I think that uh, one of the problems is that also a lot of. McKinsey alums go on to have positions in government. In government, they yeah. They go on to have positions as CEOs and, you know, high. Yeah, Tom Cotton and Bobby Jindal worked yeah. for them. Yeah. Oh, Bobby Jindal? Mm-hmm. I didn't know about that one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like, you know, it, it, it it's also a cult-like philosophy that has to do with, you know, money over everything. And it's, uh, uh, it's kind of a problem when people in government used to work there. You yeah, know, because their company philosophy then therefore goes out and influences right. It's like they only see th- they only see things through things through that lens. Yeah, which exactly. Is like preserving the sort of status quo and the yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people out there who like they just love the system the way it is. Yeah, that's yeah. It's a. They're very happy. Yeah, because they're going to be dead in fifteen years, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but there's a lot of people who have these like sort of managerial jobs or whatever it is that are just like. They hate any kind of suggestion that of change, or yeah. and they're not—they're not even that powerful. But they have—they have like they're comfortable enough where mm-hmm. they can be against our fucking revolution, baby. Well, you're gonna be in jail. No, I don't know. No, the pe- no oh. <laughs> people who oppose Bernie when he's finally president. Oh, they're gonna yeah. be locked up. Yeah, I I would like that, but. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah. Well, I guess that's a wrap. If you have any, is that a wrap? Sure. Um, I I don't know. I don't, I don't really have anything else to add about them. I just think that. Um, oh, thanks, Malin. It's a fucking problem. Old nothing else to add, Malin. No. Yeah, that's my. That was my nickname. That was my sex nickname, and it still is. <laughs> nothing, nothing else to else add. Nothing else to add. I'm fine. I'm here. Whatever. Um, cool. Well. Thanks for being here. Thank you for letting me pet your dogs. Oh, yeah, anytime. 
Um, Mostly here for the dogs, but yeah, this is also fun. Yeah, I guess. And thank you guys for listening. If you guys have any suggestions we should do on episodes, shoot us a little email, sitdownpod at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, support us on Patreon if you can, uh, patreon.com slash sitdownpod. And if you don't mind uh, going over to iTunes and giving us a little rating or a review, we would appreciate that. Um, you know where to find us. And uh, yeah, follow us on um social media stay in touch we appreciate all the support and we will see you next time bye bye